So today we are looking at a, a very requested piece of anatomy, which is often a, a challenging surgery. And we are looking at doing a proximal femur. So a lot of times this would be done on a traction table. Obviously at my facility, we do not have a traction table. At the trauma center where I used to work, we didn't use a, a traction table as standard. We used to actually just use a, a regular bed that was good for imaging just because of the volume, uh, the extra time and setup. And here uh, we can actually get the same views and it's the same procedure. So regardless of the table type, the anatomy that we are looking to image is the exact same. So as much as we can equate that information, we will, but let's go ahead and start looking at some of the images that we have to capture. So when we come in, when we approach the table, what we have to remember is we are interested in imaging the surgical neck. So when I come in, I'm going to come in at an angle that is perpendicular or what I feel may be perpendicular to that surgical neck. And when I also come in, I don't want to come in all the way with my boom arm closed. I want to set up so that my AP, I would just have to extend out just a little bit. And that way it gives me a chance to close my distance when I come in for the lateral. So let's go ahead and look for our lateral first. So I'm going to push in. I will keep this unlocked because as I come through, I want to have the option to push in so that I avoid hitting the table on the far side. And then I would look to come back a little bit so I clear the patient on this side. So typically, if you're on a traction table, you are most likely looking to be set up to have a a perfectly flat lateral so that when you're at 90 degrees you would get a good lateral and that's the deal with the traction table is that you would be set flat and then your surgeon would go ahead and apply that traction and rotation so that they can then get the lateral they want but more often times in the trauma situations i'm used to our patient would be bumped up so that the 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 leg of interest is sitting higher than the the good leg so we would have to image over the top um, of that leg to get the one that we're looking at. So here, because the patient is bumped up, I'm just looking to start around about 10 degrees. It's just a, a random number that I think I'm going to be a little bit um, shooting down. So similar as if we're doing a cross table hip. So let's go ahead and take that first picture and see what we have. Okay, so we're not too bad. However, we are a little bit too high. So the first thing I would do is lower my tube down because I want to get that neck in the center of my field. We went a little bit too far. So we'll kind of split the difference and that's us around a bit there. So now I will lock my in and out because I feel pretty good with that position. But now if you look at the shape of the, the femoral neck running into the shaft, you can see there's a little bit of a depression and that it's angling towards the posterior. So that's telling me that I am too low. So I want to go ahead and raise my C-arm height up. And I'll do that about five degrees. So now I've come up about five degrees, but I can see that I'm now shooting posteriorly. So again, I will have to raise up my C-arm to try and maintain that center. Or I could push in either way. So here we are here. Now you can see that that femur is starting to flatten out a little. So I think I'm probably going to come up just another few degrees. And we'll see what we have there. Now you can see more of a straight line running from the surgical neck all the way through to the shaft. But let me come up another five so we can see the difference. And here's that picture there. So now you can see the femur is starting to point out anteriorly. So that shows that we have went too far. So let's come back to where we felt we got that good image. And then something I always do is when I have my angle, I want to go ahead and place a mark on my C arm so that I can reproduce that angle and find it again quickly. So from here, I have that locked in. I also have my in and out marked, just in case I have to make a change to my centering when I come up to the AP. So now when I come up to the AP, I am about 17 degrees from lateral there. So 
to get my lateral femur, I'm set at 17 degrees. So if I come up, I have to add 90 degrees to get that. So I'm at 90, I have to add my 17. So that's what we have here. Now, when I'm arced this way, I'm rolling too far over the top. So to get that plane, I'm shooting across the patient. So I have to tilt my C arm so that I can now give a trajectory back at 90 degrees to the, to the body, which is where I would want that central ray approaching for the patient there. So let's go ahead and take that image here, a left to right there. So here we have our AP. So that gave me 90 degrees. And you can see, I think we still need a little bit extra tilt. Let's see what happens uh, to the greater trochanter. Just a couple of degrees. And I'm going to close that gap at the top. I'm going to take a little bit of the tilt off, or the roll, sorry. And then we confirm just by going a little bit more the other way. And just with the, the patient's position, if we go too far, we will throw that femur over the ischium. So that's not exactly what we're looking for either. So here we see a nice depression on the surgical neck and we have good alignment. I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate my image just to get that running up nice and 12 to six. So this would be my AP. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my C arm there. I didn't actually have to change my in and out, so I'm good there. My height, I can achieve both views from that same height, so we're kind of locked in to that fulcrum idea. So now, if I was to come back through for my uh, lateral, again, taking care not to hit the bed, I have this unlocked, but I should be good because I already cleared that path. Now I'll go ahead and log in. So I still have my uh, previous lateral on the right screen. So let's see what's happened if I can keep these angles on the C-arm. We actually have the same alignment. So I'm now in a position where for me to go back and forth, there's my lateral and we come back on up. Again, I can move faster because now I have made that path. So as long as someone is paying attention to the drape on that side, I can go back and forth between my lateral and my AP as the surgeon is trying to get that start position and they start advancing their drill. And if they start advancing their uh, the, the actual nail, now, if I had to travel south, I can do that for a portion of this surgery, especially for the initial approach. Once we start moving too far distal, I would then have to come and in uh, perpendicular to the patient. But if I want to travel north and south a little bit here, I align my handle with the plane of the, the femur. So if I had to travel south, and I'll demonstrate this more better on the AP, but if I had to travel south here, and I'll, I'll do it live, you wouldn't do it live on a patient, but as I slide south here, you can see I can maintain my body part in the center. So it's good enough for some things, but the true sense is when you come up to the AP position. Uh, where are we at here? There's our AP. So now, we'll take one more so that we know we're still there. I'm going to pull back just a little bit. There we go. So now, as I slide south, I'm AP proximally, so I should be able to slide south and man maintain my AP as I travel all the way distant. And I can pull the sea arm down towards me. And there's not a lot of travel there as I go up and down the shaft. Then if I come back on up, back through to my lateral. Again, I keep my lock in because I'm always being gentle to make sure if I feel any resistance, I have my in and out awareness where I can uh, correct for that. And I'm probably a little distal. Oh, 
actually we're, we're good. So that I'm able to move distal, slide back north. When I'm in my AP, I can travel down the shaft just to see the path of the nail or the drill or the guide. And I can also see that on the lateral. Doesn't really matter that I'm semi-axial on the lateral because it shows that it's maintaining. The lateral shows the anterior posterior path of the drill. And when I come up to my AP, that's what shows the medial lateral uh, direction of the, the drill or the guide um, as you travel distal.